Welcome back to What Are Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a Conqueror gun carriage. It's a tier 10 British SPG. It's located on the northeast spawn of Klondike, and this one is under the command of the base man from hell. And we're finally getting to the last few replays that the base man sent in. Game started. Now it's a 9.2 inch howitzer mounted on a Conqueror hull. This RT never got built, but it was in the blueprints, so they were thinking about it. The caliber of the gun is 234 millimeters, or 9.2 inch, and it's capable of 1200 alpha, and it's got a footprint of 12.2 meters radius, so it's got a big splash. And yes, it is possible to take out several tanks at the same time with one of these. And if you can fire at uh, enemies that are bunching together, you can do a huge amount of damage to them. The colours, by the way, I think part of them are from uh, Baseman and the others are from some Rusty with the Union flag on the side. He's moving to a firing position. This looks a good spot. He's ready to go, now searching for a target. Well, the first one he sees is a leopard, but he doesn't last very long because an STB takes him out. But over here we've got a 60TP, which is a tier 10 Polish tank. He's just been hit by a round from another arty. Rounds out. Oh, that's a kill. That's definitely a kill. So, Baseman's got his first kill on the board. And he's now looking for another target to shoot at. And well, there's a few. He's got an E100 up there hiding behind the rocks. Thinks he's safe there. He's not. The trajectory of these shells is actually quite good. It's uh, almost straight up, straight down. In fact, that's why people have actually nicknamed the uh, Conqueror gun carriage the Orbital Laser Cannon or the uh, Orb Orbital Nuking Cannon. It's, the shells are coming down almost on top of you. So they're going to hit the top armour of a tank. He's fired at the E100. He gets a direct hit, even though it was unspotted at the time the shell went in. We know he got a direct hit because there was no explosion. Okay, this next one is a mouse. The Mighty Mouse, or Danger Mouse, actually. It says that on the side of the vehicle. That's another Sir Rusty skin. Or is it uh, Jazz's skin? I think it may have been Jazz's, that one. It's a lovely skin anyway. And a lot of people say, oh, doesn't it look gaudy? But no, it's actually quite funny. And she arranged it so Mighty Mouse's um, hand was actually the port on the side of the <laughs> mouse. There's a little gun port where you can actually poke out a small arm. Another direct hit on the E100. 453 this time. We didn't get a reading on how much he got the last time because it was unspotted, but... Oh, wow, 60TP just met a death at the hands of a Striv 1030. And over there, we just saw briefly a Heshbon. I don't refer to it by the other name. I call it the Heshbon because it was designed to fire Hesh. In fact, now we've got a Jaegeru and a Heshbon. He's going for the Heshbon. It's got weaker skin armor, and you're much more likely to get a penetration. In fact, there's two of them. They must be breeding there. Oh, takes a long time for the shell to arrive, but it splashes one of the uh, Heshpans for 383. So he's racking up the damage, and that mouse now is on his last legs. So he switched to overhead because it's actually difficult to get a shot when you've got um, rocks in the way, and he needs to fine tune his aiming to get it just on the money. Well, if he finds that one in right now and he hits the mouse, I think he'll put it out of the game. He's marked it as target. Rounds out. Yep, he got him. Okay, the E100 we hit earlier is crossing the water. Heading towards the dockside area. Well, it's not really dockside, but that's sort of like fishing village with a wharf. There's the dockside over there. And that Jaegeru um, just taken a nasty hit. He's not quite a splash kill yet. He's still got over 700 hit points. But we can certainly ruin his day. 
I know a lot of players say, oh, Warty, they ruin it, but you shouldn't be camping if you don't want to get hit. Direct hit, 576. Now he's a splash kill. Okay, we've got an AMD 13105, French light tank. Harassing one of our FB4005. Ooh, and he just got vaporized. In fact, actually, he was taken out by a gorilla. Okay, looking back towards the dock side, we can see that Yeager bit the dust. Somebody else got him. And we're looking for more targets. Nobody in sight at the moment. Oh, there's a centurion there behind the silos. And an STB, but... He's still looking for tanks in the vicinity, and oh, he's found the Hesh Barn again, the other one. In fact, I, I think that the, the, there's still two over there. And there's another Yeagru there as well. Yeagru just took his shot. Ah, oh, there's that Striv 103B. Now, he's got very thin armor, but he finds the snapshot in at the Yeagru. And 377. Now that Striv has actually been causing trouble because uh, he's one of the guys who took out one of our 60 TPs. A few tanks getting closer, including a batch at 25 ton, who's just taken two massive hits and gets wiped out by the Griller again. So that, that Griller's racking up the kills. Yeagru. He is a splash kill if you can get it on target. It's right up against the edge of the map. Oh, and just after we fire, he was taken out. So that was a wasted shot, I'm afraid. But uh, never mind, it does happen sometimes. It's one of the price you have to pay for being arty. The shell velocity is very slow. And it takes time for the shell to fly from one end of the map to the other. And by the time you've fired your shell, the enemy might have been wiped out so shell just hits a wreck instead as it is on this occasion i know it can be a lot of a pain for uh, rt players because you waste a lot of shots and a lot of rt players actually use a mod which prevents them firing at wrecks so if the target is actually turned into a wreck just before they press the fire button it prevents the shell going out and that can be a big saver so if you don't have mods, you might want to get that one. Fires the round in. And he damages one hedge barn. And there was another one there. Just around the corner. They're using the wreck of that uh, Yeagru to protect themselves. As well as that rock. Oh, two tanks together here now. This is where I like to load the, uh, the the premium HE because it gets you a bigger footprint and you do more damage to each enemy tank. He's loaded. Going for the E3. Rounds out. 482. Stuns him with a nice long stun. But he still takes out our Yeager, unfortunately. And another Arty's just stunned both of them. But we've lost sight of them now. Because we've got nobody in that area. Except an AMX 50B and an E100. And they're the other side of the uh, face. Oh, they've gone around the corner and found them. There's the Jaeger, uh, the Heshpans again. They keep reloading, popping out to take a shot. And popping back into cover again. Well, baseband's loaded. But again, they've disappeared now. He fires in here now. Oh, the E100 died. And it's that E3 again. He's lined up a shot on the E100. And gets a hit for 665. And the target dies immediately afterwards. So he picks up the stun assist. Well, he's now running short on teammates um, in this area. Because the E3 just... Or was it the no? It was the GW E100 just killed our AMX 50B, and that means uh, baseman's well in fairly close proximity to an E3. 
our team though are doing rather well because they've actually gone around the back of the enemy so that e3 is one of the last few enemies alive including those heshpans that we saw we can't see the e3 at the moment but we can probably see the e3, uh, the heshpans very shortly that strip 103b just took out our object 140 the same guy we fired at before base man fires around him where he thought the e3 was he might not be there anymore Moving up using cover. There's one of the Heshpans. He's gone around the side of the rock to protect himself, but not from uh, Baseman's shells, which will land virtually on top of him. And he's got very thin armor, so this shell might actually penetrate him and do a max roll. And it looks like he just took a shell from another RT there. Rounds out. Oh! The kill happens to an object from an object 261 just as uh, our shell left the tube. So again, we fired a round out and it didn't do anything. That Striv is still there being a nuisance, but he's probably about to die because there's uh, more than a few of our tanks ganging up on him. And Baseman's now paying attention. Baseman's got three kills, so somebody's asked to platoon with him. Obviously, they're thinking about brothers in arms, I think. Rounds out and strip. If this hits, bad news for him. Enemy yep, he got the kill. And that means there's only three left. The T-110 E3, who just killed that IS-7 in front of our eyes. And the two Heshpans. Now, that means the E3 must have headed west to have killed the IS-7. But again, we can't see him. Oh, there he is. He's popped up on the map. He's in grid square K5. Oh, and an RT round from the GWE-100 took him out. So there's only two left. And I think it's both those Heshpans. Baseman's relocating. Trying to get closer to the enemy. In fact, it's not a foregone conclusion that we are going to win this game because although we're four up on the enemy, Heshbarn does have a characteristic of actually turning the tables because it has got that big 183mm gun. And it's a good job that he did relocate because there is a T92 HMC nearby as well. The enemy RT decided to go down to dockside oh but he just met a death at the hands of our fv4005 and that leaves there's only one enemy left or is it they've all gone no they've all gone and well base has been captured no it's not all gone there was still one alive but we capped out let's have a look at the end of battle stats it's a second class tanker for the base man from hell in the conqueror gun carriage he managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills he got four exactly a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits he got 13 he got a gauze medal he did more damage exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle and his win eight from that game was 5,873. And he was racking up the damage, as he says, in a grand battle. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, didn't get the highest damage in the game. It's that E3. He was absolutely deadly. 6,425 hit points of damage from him alone with his 155mm gun. And uh, the next high scorer was our GWE 100. He got 5,150. Picked up a gauze medal in Confederate. And, of course... Uh, Baseman, he also managed to get a Gauze medal in that game and 4,759 hit points, which beat the Batch at 25T on the enemy team with uh, 4571. When it came to kills, it was actually a T57 heavy on the enemy team with five kills. Uh, four kills for Baseman, four kills for the IS-7, three kills for the 261, and that's Triv. Yes, he was quite deadly as well. He was the last one actually alive, or was it there were two left alive on the enemy team when we capped out? Sorry, a bat chap 155.58 and the strip 103B. Those um, Heshpans must have been taken out earlier, and I didn't see that happen. When it came to base XP, it's the GWE100. He did the best with 1,098. 977 goes to the IS-7. 916 goes to the base man. 
He fired 14 rounds, got 5 direct hits, no penetration but 15 splash. Damage of 4,759 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 9 of the enemy, killed 4, and did 212 hit points of stun assist off 11 stuns. Now that may account for why his XP wasn't as high as some of the others, because he didn't do a lot of stun assist during that game. He actually killed them rather than actually stunned them. 58,667 credits on a premium count, and after ammunition resupply, and of course this ammo is expensive, but he was firing standard ammo throughout, 24,367 credits to take away. He earned 32 bonds for the awards, and 9 for the battle, 41 in total. Uh, 1,374 XP times 4 on this occasion, Took away 5,496 altogether, so a particularly good battle, but he it would have been higher, but for the fact that obviously he didn't have a lot of stun assist. And I suppose in, in some of these battles, the grand battles, it does help to be firing when your teammates are shooting at the enemy. So at the moment you hit them, you then indicate them, so the arrows appear above the stun target, and then all your teammates seem to fire at that target at the same time. And and then you pick up racks, loads of uh, stun assist, and, and that, that's where it really makes the difference on your XP. But uh, well done to the base man. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. We're only a small channel. Really, we've got a huge number of vi videos, <laughs> over 5,500 now, but uh, we are still only a few subscribers, which is a bit surprising. Maybe it's down to the fact that I'm absolutely crap and people don't like listening to my voice, I suppose. That might be the answer. Uh, I can't help it. It's the way I talk. But uh, even so, we do do a lot of content and uh, obviously a lot of people are happy to have their videos and their replays on YouTube so other people can share them as well. So thanks very much for watching.